Hey everyone, how's it going? Solomon Christ here with another video. This one's all about debugging. That's right. It's so important to, you know, use this skill and have the skill with you when you're creating workflows, when you're, you know, working day in, day out with AI and automation. Knowing how to debug things is very, very important and understanding what the different types of bugs are can really help you out. So in this video, we're going to go over various different forms of bugs and situations and even some ideas on how to debug them. So if you're excited, let's get started. All right. So whenever we're working with, you know, AI and automation, there's a lot of different types of bugs and issues that are going to come up. So I'm going to go over the various types of ones and how I actually, you know, work through them. And hopefully this will help you out as well. The first type of major bug that you're going to experience is the most common one, and that's known as a runtime bug. So a runtime bug is when an actual, you know, run of your workflow happens and something fails. Okay, hence the name runtime bug. So with these ones here, they're generally the types of bugs that, you know, you can usually figure out. So maybe there was some data that came in that, uh, you know, it was incorrect, or maybe there was something along the flow that broke. Many times, uh, you know, it's like just information that is not formatted correctly. So let's just dive into an N8N workflow here. And as you can see right now, I don't have anything. So I'm just going to throw in a trigger here, just like that. And right now I'm going to create, let's say an HTTP request. All right. Just like that. So now if I try and run this here, you can already see, I've got, you know, a runtime bug going. So I hit the execute button and boom, I've got a problem. The work, uh, the workflow has a problem. Uh, and usually it's saying uh, what the actual problem is. So if I actually double click on this, as you can see, well, guess what? It doesn't have a website. So now I'm just going to type in anything here, ASDF. All right. Wonderful. So that one is a very straightforward one. Other times you'll have runtime bugs where it's like the data that came in or came out was incorrect, but you won't know that until you actually run the workflow. Okay. So that's what the runtime bug is all about. The next type of bug here is known as a non runtime bug. These are a little bit more harder to figure out. And many times they have to do with either logic or data. This could mean that like at this point here, as we're looking at this here, my logic could be off. So I'll show you an example of, you know, a non runtime bug. So a logic bug. So watch this. I'm going to put Mark down here. And usually if I get a proper website, so let's get solomonchrist.com. So as you can see, I've got the data from solomonchrist.com. And so now the idea here is that I want to take that data and throw it into a markdown. Okay. And this is actually, you know, like the actual logic is out of order. So this ran as a runtime but it is a non runtime bug because the logic is wrong. This is my output, but the output is HTML, raw HTML. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be a markdown. Well, guess what? I have to move my nodes around and now I will actually be able to fix that non runtime bug, which is a logic bug. So now when I execute this workflow, watch this. There we go. Now I've got the correct output. And that is what the non runtime logic bug is all about. One of the things that I like to do is I like to pseudocode things. And pseudocode is a fancy word for write this out in plain English, step by step by step. And so in this case, I want to get a website, I want to parse the website, and I want to make some JSON from the website. That's pseudocode. I wrote it out in plain English and I can understand it. All right. Then from my pseudocode, I'll go out and I'll draw out what I need in the nodes. And that could be either me doing it manually or using some form of, you know, um, vibe coding tool like Claude or something like that, where I have it actually, you know, create my entire N8M workflow for me. All right. So the next type of bug is known as a ghost bug. And these sorts of bugs are the ones that are very, very hard to find. Some of the most challenging ones, and they usually run after, you know, a certain amount of time. This could be such as, um, you know, you hit an API, uh, you know, maximum. And so now let's say Google, for example, is locking you out. You won't know that immediately you'd have to run your actual workflow many times to say, oh my goodness, after like every 10 times or maybe every 15 times, it's just breaking. I don't know what's going on. That's a ghost bug, right? And so now maybe after every 10 times, 15 times, you go into like your execution log here inside of N8N. You're like, oh, okay, I see. It's breaking on the Google API. Maybe I got to put like a five second wait timer on that, all right? But you wouldn't have been able to find that ghost bug unless you ran this thing several times and saw, oh my goodness, it's an API, you know, timeout that's going on. It's not a logic bug. It's not a data bug. It is literally that, you know, whatever service I was using was dying out. That's a ghost bug. 
all right? Because it doesn't happen all the time. It happens sometimes and not sometimes. So that's the challenge there. That's why they're so hard to find. Our next type of bug is called an infinite loop bug. This is a type of bug where it's notorious that, you know, uh, it'll shut down your servers. And that's what it's known for. And you got to be very careful. If you're doing any form of loops, any form of recursion. So uh, a loop is literally, you literally get a loop here, right? Okay, a loop over items. And it's just going on forever. You've got a massive amount of loops and it's just it just won't stop, right? So that will either time out your server or just keep running until you're like, what's going on, right? And so your server will shut down or you're just like, it's just not stopping, right? So in that case here, you can go into your executions and sometimes you'll see an execution that's going on forever and ever and ever. Well, guess what? If you're running a self-hosted like VPS server, you could shut those down. In other cases, you may have to, you know, go out to support maybe in cloud or whatever you're using to actually say, hey, you know what? I need some help. Can you shut down the server? Because I've got an infinite loop going on. Other infinite loop bugs can happen right inside every AI agent. So there's times where I've had an AI agent, for example. So, you know, AI agent node. And, you know, I put it into like um, either some MCP or maybe you've got some AI agent set up here. And I'll just throw in some open AI here, right? And then you ask it to go back and forth with a tool. And you may even put inside your instructions, keep on going until this is done. Sometimes the AI agent itself or the service that you're using goes in an infinite loop. So that one there is kind of like a ghost bug. It's kind of like a mix between those types of bugs. But, you know, if that is constantly going on, you want to, number one, lock down your tokens because that's going to eat up all your money. And number two, you want to actually, you know, check your execution log. All right. So this next one, the wrong node bug or the wrong node version bug. Many times you'll get like an um, uh, entire workflow that you've copied and pasted off the internet. So many of us are, you know, notorious for doing that. Or you've got something that you used a vibe code app like Claude or some other uh, app like Perplexity to generate the entire workflow, but it coded it using an older version of N8N. And now when it comes in, it's using an older version of the node. In that situation there, all you have to do is just kind of like delete the node and hit tab and get, you know, the latest version of the node that will fix it. Other times it's like that actual node no longer exists, or you might have to find a replacement node for that specific one. I remember I had to change a few of the start nodes because it was a different type of start node that came in. Or uh, there's times where they've got a better version of the node and you're just like, man, I just got to change it. Okay. So in those cases, those are a little bit easier to find because you know what's going on, but now that kind of gives you an idea of what you want to look for. Okay, so now another thing that we want to do is we want to put out console logs. Now, in this case here, we don't actually have console logs like we do in other programming softwares. And so one of the nice things that any then has is, you know, especially when you're doing a visual sort of editing here and you're trying to see visually what's going on, they've got something called a no operation node. And what that is, is like right now, for example, if uh, let me just delete this here. If I have this here and I double click on this and let's say I have an output, uh, I have, uh, you know, using error output here. Well, if I run this, I can't always see this because, you know, this just turns green. But if I actually put a no operation code here, right there, the no operation node, when I do that, now I'll visually see it. So this is actually a very useful node, especially when you're looking through a lot of different executions and trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. There we go. So now if I actually go into my executions, look at the last execution here, and now you can see it's very clear versus if I don't do that, well, then I'll just have the two lines and I'm like, I'm not sure kind of where it went. So I could see kind of, you know, if it was just a line, I wouldn't really see it, especially with these massive workflows. And it's like, it's zoomed out a bit and it's very hard to see, but I can clearly see the green there. Now, if I look from here and, you know, if it's a big workflow, at least I'll kind of see, okay, you know what? I could see that flow just like that. Okay. So another uh, way to actually debug um, different nodes and different parts of code, especially when you're working with workflows. Uh, this one I call seek and destroy. It's also known as needle and haystack. Um, but basically what it is, is you're taking two ends of the workflow and you're constantly going in and in, you know, just closer and closer to where that bug is. And so what you do is you start adding in specialized nodes to get the data outputs. And then I put nodes on each side to actually go deeper within that entire workflow until I get closer to where the bug is actually coming in. And that is usually done with, you know, certain JSON elements where I'm actually going to take a code node and I'm going to say, okay, pass this variable through the flow and see if it's actually going through and vice versa on the other end, see what's coming out. And I'm trying to get certain, you know, inputs and outputs 
which I can detect how the actual nodes in between are changing that. And so it's kind of like um, what we call black box testing, where I'm saying, okay, this you know actual node as a black box, it's if I put this input, I'm expecting this output. And it's like, okay, if there are three or four nodes in between, I keep on going in until I'm left with like one node right in between, and I've got the input and the output. And once I know what that expected you know input output is, and I know what's going on, I now know that that specific node is the one causing the trouble. And that's where I did that, you know, seek and destroy or needle in haystack going from two ends. That's how you do a seek and destroy. It's a unique debugging method. I use it a lot and it's going to be, you know, hopefully helpful to all of you. So now there's another way that we can actually see the console logs. And inside of Google Chrome, you can actually do this in, in many of the, you know, Chrome powered, you know, browsers. You actually go inside of the actual um, editor here, for example, and you type in control, shift, and I on the keyboard. Now you're going to see the console view. And over here, you're going to see all the different outputs and you're going to see additional data. So that is very, very helpful, especially when you're, you know, not seeing the bugs that you, you know, hopefully are going to see in a runtime or even in a non-runtime bug. Sometimes you're just not getting it. And so now you can open up this console view here using control shift and I, and you'll see a whole bunch of, you know, additional information. All right. And finally, we have advanced error workflows here. And this is the last part here in N8N specifically, where you can actually now have this go out to a specific error workflow. So if I hit tab here and I type in error, you'll see here as an error trigger or a stop an error, I can actually make a workflow that takes in an error and kind of you know describes what's going on, or I can have it forcefully throw an error at any point here if I wanna kind of see how the flow is going. This is great, for example, the stop and error, when you have a massive workflow and it's just too much going on, it's really, really busy. So what we wanna do is in that situation, we wanna have you know, stop and errors kind of put in between so you can kind of follow along and see you know, where the actual issue is happening. All right, so there you have it. Now you've seen an entire video about how to you know, debug, different thoughts around debugging, different ways that you can debug your workflows. It's gonna become useful to you more and more as you go deeper and deeper into AI and automation. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video, and I look forward to seeing you in another video in the future. Take care. Bye-bye.